currently live on Facebook right this very moment. So for those folks who are freezing cold and you're at home with blankets around you, we're glad you tuned in. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, we're glad that you're here tonight as well. One of the joys of this service, and this service that we're doing is the lessons and carols, goes back to 1880. So 142 years ago tonight, at King's College, Cambridge, this service was started. And it's a service not just of Luke chapter 2, it's the whole of the story of salvation from Genesis all the way through. So we're glad that you're here tonight. And what's fun about this service for me is so many people get involved in it. You don't have to just hear my voice tonight. There are a lot of other folks who are contributing and helping out, and I'm just pleased about that. We've already heard some great trumpet music tonight and the organ prelude, so thank you for that. Um, at the end of each of the readings, the reader is going to say, The Word of the Lord. And the congregation will respond, Thanks be to God. I have this in 72 font. <laughs> so we're going to practice that just real quick. I'm going to pretend I'm a reader, and I'm going to say, The Word of the Lord. Okay, now this section right here. The word of the Lord. People sitting in the balcony and, and uh, sitting over here. Uh, <laughs> the word of the Lord. All right. The word of the Lord. Okay, if we practiced it like that, we should be able to be like right on it when we do it to, during church. Okay. All right. We're going to start this by lighting our Advent candles. We're going to call on members of the Bergner family to do that. that will remake us, transform us, some relationship, some hope, some love that will make us new. Maybe we're looking for the gift we remember this night. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born to us th today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. What we go out to see in the middle of our world is not necessarily the Christ child or the light that glows within. No, I think what we watch over in the world that he came to save, the masses of humanity who think they can find salvation in the stuff of this life, like we know we do sometimes, when we forget a world that has room for a savior, even when we've forgotten it. And part of what we are keeping watch for is to see whether we can make room, room for grace, room for joy, room for peace, even at our worst, at our most needy, in our most helpful and grace-filled. Keep watch. Let us light these candles and complete this circle. As we rejoice in the light that shines in the darkness and declare with joy and with hope, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we get going too far in the service of worship, does everybody have a candle? It's hard to have a candlelight service if you don't have a candle. All right, very good. If one of you in the back would bring one to the pastor who doesn't have one. <laughs> If you would be so kind to run me a candle, I'd, I'd appreciate that. God love you. Thank you. That'll come in ever so handy later. Okay. Would you be so kind now to stand in body or in spirit as we sing two verses, first and fourth, of Once in Royal David City?
may be seated. Pray. Beloved in Christ, this Christmas Eve, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this of all things would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save, for love and unity within the one church he did build, for goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but on another shore and in greater light. That multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we are evermore one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with divine grace. Christ give us the joy of everlasting life, and unto the fellowship of citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Well, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. And he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife, and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. The word of the Lord.
Genesis 22, 15 through 18. And, and the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sun on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. The word of the Lord. Isaiah 9, 2, 6, 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The word of the Lord.
Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 5a. The king is coming and will reign, usher in a reign of justice for the poor and peace for all God's creation. The scripture says, But you, Bethlehem of Raphthra, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins for are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. The word of the Lord. Would you please stand as we sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. six months, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. The angel answered. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. 
I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. The word of the Lord. That your baby boy will one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm? with his hand did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod when you kissed your little baby you kissed the face of God the blind will see the deaf will hear dead will live again, the name will ring, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will not be of a nation? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? A sleeping child, your heart. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a dec decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for Mary, excuse me, for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The word of the Lord.
A child is born, a child is born. Sing glory unto God on high, joy to all the world this night, and to all people peace, and to all people peace. Remember him, oh little star, remember him and shine. Around the world, in every heart. On this holy night, Shepherds go out to the, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The word of the Lord.
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. The wise men follow a star to find the child Jesus, the King of the Jews. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the teen time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, you are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd, my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report him to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The word of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, 
and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. Y'all are in great. I'm going to continue to use this one. Um, we're going to move now from lessons and carols to candle lighting. Now, candlelight works best if it's as dark as possible. And there's this great big door back there that's open. There's like 120 light but white bulbs back there burning and stuff. So we're, we're working on making it a little bit dark. Now... I made sure that everybody had a candle before. Uh, one time I did this and we got it completely dark in the sanctuary. We didn't have any lights on. And some little boy goes, kind of scared of the dark. Um, and uh, so we, we want to make sure that uh, you know that the light is coming soon, okay? Candle, as it is right now that you're holding in your hand, is a good example of what life is without Christ. It's got a lot of promise got a lot of potential. It could be something really important. It could dispel darkness. It could create warmth. It could do a lot of different things. On Christmas Eve, for some of us, it's not Christmas until we sit in a darkened sanctuary and we've got a candle in front of our face and we sing all the verses of Silent Night. There's just something important about that. Some of it's tradition, but some of it reminds us once again that Christ is calling us to come out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. But Jesus didn't do the ministry by himself, and I'm not going to try to do it either. And I am so grateful for all the help I've had this night with singers and readers and, and people turning off lights and doing all sorts of things tonight. Our technology, our folks, they're just wonderful. Tonight... 
we're going to share the light. So what's going to happen is someone's going to come by you with a candle that's vertical, like this, up and down. I'm going to ask you to turn yours horizontal so you can light off the light. But it's not just turning your candle. It might also be for some of you the day when you turn your heart to Jesus Christ in this very quiet time, in this very sacred space, where you say, God, I'm going to turn my heart to you. I'm going to turn my life to you, and I'm going to have you light my way for the rest of my life. So I'm going to go to the Christ candle. continue to share the light. We're going to start to sing Silent Night right now, okay? candlelight in this wonderful sanctuary surrounded by friends and family, the church family. It's good to know how loved we are. And it's good to know that we still have a mission. When each of you turns your candle and you lit somebody else's candle, that's kind of evangelism. That's sharing the message of Jesus Christ. That maybe somebody else's life, life can be not clothed in darkness, but it can have a marvelous light. There are opportunities in front of us every day. There are opportunities for us tonight to see each other and talk to each other after this service is over. There are opportunities to help this congregation continue the ministry that it has 
all through the year. Our offering plates are in the back. We pray that this will be a service of worship that draws you close to God. And that because we've been here, our lives will be different. And our lives will make a difference for Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. We are dismissed. Thank you.